Hey everybody, so in this video we are going to look at scrapling. So scrapling is a higher performance and is a web scraping library for Python that automatically adapts to website changes while are performing other popular alternatives. So it solves the issue with failing web scrapers due to anti-bot protections or website changes and it offers a really faster resource. So it implements many best practices, design patterns, and numerous optimization to save fractions of seconds. So it makes it really faster. So it also handles parsing HTML documents. So we are gonna look at some of the features and other use cases, right? Right, it's very simple to install and it has key features. So it fetch website as you prefer with async support. And it has the HTTPS request, dynamic loading and automation. So it uses the fetch class. So fetch class, so there are several um, fetch classes that is implemented within the um, scraping library. So fetch classes are uh, interfaces built on top of other libraries with other features that do request or fetch pages for you in a single request. And it then returns something we call adapter object. So this feature passes it manually to the adapter class and it's used to create an adapter instances. And that is where it starts playing around with the pages. All right, so we're gonna look at that uh, features and it has adaptive scripting so it has a smart element tracking flexible selection and it's used to find similar elements all right so it's a smart content scraping right so it extracts data from multiple websites without specific specific selectors all right it has a high performance lightning fast memory efficient and has a fast JSON serialization that is 10 times faster than the standard library. All right, it is also, so th these are some of the things you need to get started. I'm gonna show you in a second. So it also has comparison with others. That is the text extraction speed. In terms of speed, you can see scrapling being on top. All right, so we're gonna go into it briefly. So let's get into my BS code. I'm going to show you how this is done. So we are going to implement this. This is the block website, my my block website. And we are going to implement this to build it. So I'm going to attach the link of this GitHub page. I'm going to attach that in the description so you can, can get more information on that. All right, so let's get into VS Code. So in my VS Code, we have some uh, samples of how to test this. So we have the already created my environment. If but if you wanted to create my environment, just that everything is is in just in one place, you can do Python dash m v m v e m v. When you hit enter, it's going to create that for you. And if you wanted to activate, it's emv slash script slash activate. So it's going to activate the environment. So all that we need to do is install scripting and scripting install. That is all that you need, right? So I've already installed that. So you do pip install scripting, right? And that's it. And the second one is install scripting install right so we're going to do scripting so that's going to install all the dependencies in the browsers right it's very simple scripting install all right it's already installed so now let's start with the first so we're going to import from scripting we import the fetcher that is used to fetch pages. It's built on top of other libraries where the, it has added features that do the request and fetch pages for you in a single request. So it creates this uh, return an adapter object, right? And it is passes it manually to the adapter class to create adapter instances, right? And fetches the 
content from the page. All right, so we use the we call the fetcher and we use the auto match is equal to true if the website structure changes. So it takes care of that, right? If there's a change in the website, but if you don't want it, you do it false, right? So I'm going to say true. And so we do HTTP request to the web page and we create the adapter instance. So we call fetcher. So we get the page, right? So we, we use the stealthy headers to be true and we get all the test content, right? So writing this code. So we want to ignore the script and the styles, right? So if you wanted to ignore some of the information, you just put pass it in here, ignore tax. All right, pretty simple, bro. You just need three lines of code, right? So we're gonna do Python app dot pi. So we are passing the, the URL of this block, block page. Right, we want to extract the information here. So let's run it and see how this works. So Python, uh, okay, Python app one dot five, rather. Okay, let's do it. All right, awesome. So you can see it is able to extract all the content from the page, data edge hub, and we have the home about us, you're getting all the information from there. Exploring web, LLM assist, November, you get a date, extracting all the information from there. It's pretty simple, guys. All right, so let's go to the next one, which has other features. So from scribbling.default, we import the fetcher and the still the fetcher, right? So we just pass it like the, uh, previous code, the fetcher to get this. And we pass the additional options. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to, so right now, let me show you, we are passing this to get a latest the code to scrap. You can pass your private um, website, different website information there. All right, so let's go back. And now, so you have there, so they have, different features within the um, scripting library. All right, so we can use this feature if you wanted to, so the same thing. So if you wanted to get all the code elements, you can get element of any of this method, all right? So it's so going to return a string. So you pass the page and you pass the text with the other features to get the elements and we say get first quote element and you, so we want to get the first quote element. So you pass in, so you can limit it to whatever um, element you want to get there. So I'm going to run this. So let's see how this works. So I'm going to, I'm going to run this. Python app dot two dot pi. Let me clear this. Okay, so let's run it again. I'm going to say Python app two dot pi. Let's see. All right, so let's see how this comes up. So we wanted the first element. So we have the world as we have created it. So let's take a look. All right, and it's exactly that. Okay, so let's try with say one and see how this works. I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna run the same thing again. All right, so the second one is if it is right choices and we have the same thing again. All right, guys, this is pretty cool. Yeah, this is cool. All right, so you can limit it to several features that you want. All right, and if you wanted to use it, so use if website has anti -bot, so this feature helps you to uh, it takes care of bypassing most of anti-bot protection by default, all right? So we can use this 
It adds extra, extra layer of flavor and configuration to increase performance and undetectability. So you can use this feature, all right, for um, passing or bypassing most anti bot protection, right? So you can try this out. Okay, so you can also use the this um, use find all or find to get the division HTML tags like that you want. So you can write it, run it similar to this, right? To get all the information that you want. All right, guys, this is pretty awesome. And I'm gonna attach this in my description. You can run it from there. All right, so do try it out and let me know what you think about this. I hope you like this video and don't forget to share and subscribe. See you in the next one.